Okay, Marlon. We've given you some time to sweat. Now it's time to start telling the truth. I don't know what you're on about. Betrayal? Treachery? Eh? He means you're a lying little chora. Oh, I won't do the dirty on you guys. All for one and one for all, eh? Well, that's how it should be, yeah. But it seems your loyalties lie elsewhere. You must have known that Uncle Albert was Mr. Big. I didn't, honest. You've been passing information to the enemy. A spy, a traitor. Oh, this has gone far enough. You're just kidding, aren't you? You'd... This is no joking matter, Marlon. This tribunal has found you guilty of crimes against the family. Now, have you anything to say before I pass sentence? What are you going to do? The next time you squeal, it'll be in a very high voice. No! Grab it, Butch! <laughs> Sorry, Uncle Sam, I tried to keep her indoors. Will somebody tell me what's going on? I never thought Zoe would doubt me. She's been under a lot of pressure. We all have. I gave her control of Home Farm. I thought I could trust her with my life. Even she thinks I'm guilty. No, she doesn't. She just asked a question, that's all. We both believe in you, Dad. Oh, I'm not pretending I wasn't hurt when you turned to her instead of me through all this, because I know I could have done better. There's no point arguing about that now. We're in enough trouble without fighting among ourselves. And we all know who's responsible. If Kim were alive now, she'd be laughing her head off. Yeah. Her solicitor's due at home farm this morning. About her will. Let's hope she hasn't left any more little bombshells behind. Uh, if I were on their side, why would I risk me neck fighting them, eh? You're Albert's son. Maybe you're as devious as he is. The poor man's been in prison. He was just trying to set himself up a little business to come out to and things went wrong. You know how much he admires Uncle Zach. He never let things go so far if he'd known we were involved. Uh, maybe we should give him the benefit of the doubt, Uncle Zach. What, like when he went to burn this place down? How about when he double-crossed you and her, Sam? Well, he explained all that. I, I didn't understand it, but he was sure that he wasn't his fault. He's your brother, Zach. Surely you can forgive and forget. Right. But I'm not doing this for him. It's only because you asked. Eh, hey, I'll tell him it's all forgotten then, shall I? Yeah, as long as you tell him something else. He can count himself lucky you got away with this. And I never want to see his face round here again. Hang on, Bo! What about me? Oh, right, I'll just make my own way back to the house, shall I? I was happy in the ref. I still get quite nostalgic for service life, so I do know how you feel. You know exactly what to do, what's expected of you. Very few people seem to have that sort of discipline on the outside. Mm, more's the pity. Sometimes I worry I won't know what to do with myself. Never been one for pottering in the garden, anything like that. I'm sure you'll be all right. I hope so. <laughs> you know, at the moment, I can't even think what to get Becky for our anniversary. I don't suppose you've got any suggestions. Well, what do you usually get her? Jewelry. Sergeant in my outfit used to work in Hatton Garden before he joined up. He always advised me. Well, there are plenty of good jewelers in Harrogate. I relied on his taste. I wouldn't want to get the wrong thing. Well, perhaps this time you ought to do something completely different. Really surprise her. Treat it as an initiative test. New start, new man. We're still getting complaints about this place. Bins overflowing, lawns uncut, and the notices in the clubhouse are a week out of date. I'm sorry. Well, if people don't know the activities we're offering, they can't take part. Well, I'll get up there and I'll sort things out. Good. Make sure there's no repeat of the strip poker incident. Oh, Roy, we've had a book inquiry from a Japanese firm. They're hoping that Seth might be able to organise a shoot for their sales team. No, I said Dara's getting pretty full already, so... Well, tell him to get something sorted out. Good morning, Miss Tate. We weren't expecting you till later. I had a cancellation. Thought we'd get started. Fine. Um, my brother's at home farm. Would you like to follow me? Paris. 
Huh? I'll whisk her off there tonight. You said I should surprise her. It's a marvellous idea, but aren't you leaving it a bit late? All down to organisation, old chap. And that's something I'm good at. Thanks for the advice. I we're hoping to stop there for a while. Can't you hope to talk him around? Oh, no chance. I nearly got demasculated this morning, thanks to you. You want to stay? You're going to have to come up with the best peace offering yet. Hey, I think I might have got just a thing. Child than Zoe ever did. Hi, measured by the glass, eh? Yeah. Well, we can all eat together. I'll get cooking. Uh, just a sandwich for me, Mum. I'm off to the cattery to collect some kittens, and then I think I'll pop by the holiday village. Collecting your new assistant? Emma Kens. She seems crazy about animals. She's round at the surgery all the time these days. You were just the same at her age. I'll go make them sandwiches. I'll give you a hand. I'll see you in a minute, eh? It is great having you two stay in. Feels like we're a proper family again. Me and Biff have started talking about having a family. That would be the icing on the cake. Poor baby outside the vet. Just left there to die. I guess that's what started me thinking. I mean, we'll probably have to wait till we get a place of our own, but it's what I want more than anything. I can understand that, especially after what happens. It's going to be right this time, Mum. Biff is going to be the best dad in the world. <laughs> Do you have to do that? So, what did you get in this year? Slippers again, by any chance? No, it's a rather stylish cravat with a matching handkerchief. You know they did them in khaki. We all know what he's going to get you. Earrings? That was last year. If you check your rotor, you'll find it's a brooch this time. Well, I think you're both horrid. You'd better shut up. He's coming. I bet you'll quit it's a brooch. No chance. The only bet I'll make is whether it's dead boring or not. You better get packing, darling. What? I'm taking you to Paris for our anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Good day, Mr. Tate. How are you? Could we get this over with as quickly as possible? Well, I'll do my best, but it is a rather long and detailed document. Please sit down, Miss Martin. Mrs. Tate wrote this at a very difficult time in her life. It contains some unusual bequests, and she was anxious that no one should have a chance to contest the will in court. I'll bet. Well, seeing as you're in such a hurry, I would suggest only reading the parts that are relevant to you and Miss Tate. And my father, since he can't be with us today. The first few pages deal with minor bequests. Then she states, my overwhelming concern must be for my only son, James. His welfare, happiness and safety are all that matter to me now. For many months, my husband, Frank, has waged a campaign of hatred, deceit and even violence against me. This is outrageous. You're here to read a will, not put my father on trial. I'm just the messenger, Mr Tate. The words are hers, not mine. If you don't wish to hear them, I suggest you leave. You're sure she won't get in the way of your work? Quite the opposite, Mr Cairns. She's a great help. I expect you two will be gone by the time I get back. Well, I don't know. Uh, I'm starting to have second thoughts. What do you mean? Well, it's a lovely idea, Tony, but I'm just a bit worried about leaving the children. Nonsense. Charlotte's quite old enough to cope, and it's about time she started taking some responsibility. He's right, Mum. We'll be fine. And it's the first spontaneous thing he's ever done in his life. He might be dead before you get another chance. Well, it's not you two I'm worried about. It's Emma. She's only 13, and she hasn't been feeling very well lately. Oh, well, she could always stay over with us. We've got plenty of room and no mum wouldn't mind. Really? Oh, well, that's very kind of you, Linda. Right. That's settled, then. Apart from one thing... What now? You and your brother are on your honour to behave yourselves while we're gone. There will be no wild parties, no alcohol, no carryings on of any kind. Yes, sir. It's quite a relief, really. I thought the M.O.D. might have been doing weird experiments on his brain. But it's good to see he's back to normal. The remainder of my estate shall be divided into two parts. 
The first shall be used to set up a trust fund for my son James until he reaches the age of majority, when all property, capital and interest shall accrue to him. The fund will be administered by three trustees. Two will be nominated by my solicitors, Barton, Carby and Dobbs, and the third will be Miss Zoe Tate. There must be some mistake. Oh, no mistake, Miss Tate. No, she goes on to say that of all the family, you are the only one whose honesty, integrity and decency have never been in question. Which is also her reason for bequeathing the other half of her estate, including the livery business, to you. No, no, no she, she can't do that. But she has, Mr. Tate. It's all quite clear. There's no way Kim could leave that livery stable to anyone because it wasn't hers to give. I think you're mistaken, Mr. Tate. No, I know exactly what I'm talking about because I bought it. But there's no record of any such sale. She wanted cash. She, she insisted. But, but I've got all the papers. I can prove it. Impossible. The deeds and titles to all Mrs. Tate's properties are in our safe. You liar! You're as crooked as she was. I don't intend swapping insults with you. But it's easy to see why Mrs. Tate acted the way she did. I haven't finished with you yet. If you have anything further to say to me, I suggest you do it through your legal representative. Chris! You want to see me, Eric? Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, I did, can you cook? Well, like I said, I can boil an egg. Make a sandwich, open a packet of chips. Never had coal to do much more. You'd have to do more than that round here, you know. Well, it's a good job you employed me as a barman, not a cook, innit? Look, I'm sure your lady could serve up a dish full of Eastern problems. She can't work. It's against her visa regulations. I don't want any more problems with the police, do I? I'll have to do the cooking myself. Hey, I'll give Egon Ronnie a shout then, eh? It's very good of you to let me stay, Mrs. Glover. My pleasure, love. It's always nice to have children round, isn't it? Ah, and it's a shame some other folk don't see that. Do you know, if I could catch that mother that abandoned that baby, I'd have a few choice words to say to her. What'll happen to the baby? Get stuck in a home, I suppose. I wish there was something we could do for her. Well, we can always start a collection. You know, toys and baby clothes and send them down to the hospital. Now, that would show someone cared. That's a nice idea, Jan. I've looked through Alice's things later. I bet you've got some toys you don't need. I expect so. <laughs> but you're an important man, the owner. You shouldn't be working in the kitchen. It's only a temporary arrangement. I don't want to hear any more about it. See you later. I don't know why you're always worrying about him. It's yourself you should be thinking about once you're married to him. He'll make you work all the hours God sends, slave labour. How would you feel if people spoke like that about your husband? <laughs> Me and Seth aren't wed. And if you were, you could always get divorced. Well, that seems to be the way of things around here. But I wasn't brought up like that, Mrs Eagleton. I've come to England to a good marriage, and I intend to make it work. I'm glad you saw Seth this morning, Zach. I mean, you've always told me family means everything to you, Dingle, so it'd be a shame to let this feud with Albert spoil all that. It's time to bury the hatchet. Aye. The question is where? You seen him? Uh, no. He says he didn't know Mandy were behind the burgers. All that the rest of us were involved, he says he'll swear it on a Bible or your mother's sainted liar. I seem to recall him saying something similar when he got sent down for selling the village hall to a Japanese tourist. Well, that doesn't count, though, to a judge. This is family. Exactly. You've got to trust him, Zach. And as a sign of good faith, he's bringing a peace offering. Now, there's no need for that. Lisa wants peace, and that's how it'll be. Just so long as he never shows his face around here again. He's already on his way. That livery business is mine. She sold it to me. 
Not according to her solicitor. Well, maybe she's in on it too. Maybe they're all trying to swindle me. Oh, don't be ridiculous. They're a reputable firm. She genuinely knew nothing about it. And while we are on the subject, neither did Dad, and neither did I. It was a private deal between Kim and me. I didn't see any need to mention it at the time. Oh, because you knew it hit the roof if you knew you were doing secret deals with Kim. Oh, it's all right for you. You've always been the apple of his eye. He suspects me of everything I do. Usually with good reason. Well, isn't that strange? You're the one who claims not to be interested in money and power, so Dad, he, well, he puts you in charge of his half of Home Farm, and now the other half just lands into your lap, and I'm left with nothing. I didn't ask for any of this. All I want is for Dad to be proved innocent and to come back home. Oh, that is touching sentiment, Zoe. But in the meantime, you're in the driving seat and I'm left out in the cold. He's adorable, isn't he? Yeah, but let's give him back now. They don't like to be away from their mums too long at that age. Come on. Just like babies, I guess. Right, come on, you three. Oh. Sorry. Coffee for the workers. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. I'm just going to drop these little fellows right. on. There you go. She's wonderful with animals, isn't she? Yeah, she loves them. That's all she's ever wanted to do. I suppose you've known each other since you were at school. Mm, sort of, yeah. My dad says teenage marriages never work. And what do you think? You seem really happy together. Yeah, we are. But it hasn't always been easy, like when I lost my job. But as long as we've got each other, I think we'll be OK. Right. Listen, I've got to get off. Your mother's pretty keen on that baby clothes collection. She wants me to do a few house calls. Right, so I'll see you tonight, then. OK. OK. See you later. Bye. Bye. He's coming! He's coming! I wonder what this police offering is. A crazy beer to go down, won't they? Ah, the new prisons at the lunch box would go down better, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, whatever it is, it's bound to be hot. We're policing gangsters after it's same as last time. Give him a chance, Zach. Is she a beauty or what? It's a heap of junk. Albert, if that thing is meant to be a getaway vehicle, then you are dafter than I thought. It's you who's daft, Zack. Oh, this baby will give us a getaway, all right. From the breadline, our life of crime is finished. See? I told you a reform character, didn't I? And this is on its start. One day, there's going to be a fleet of luxury coaches parked outside here. He spent too much time in prison. He's gone stir-crazy. Listen, I read Maggie Thatcher's book when I was inside and she showed me just where I've been going wrong all these years. This is the age of free enterprise. The entrepreneur is king. What's an entre... You know, that thing that you said? It's somebody who has a dream and then goes out and builds it. We could make the Dingle Travel Company biggest in country. Oh, it'll take hard work, but we've never been frightened of that, have we? I'll move in tonight. First light tomorrow, we get cracking. You are not moving in. I've got two of those, Zach, and this is going to be his headquarters, isn't it? I've got to live on premises. Watch my lips. No chance. No way. Ozzy. Now, don't be too late to bed, Will. Don't worry. I'll make sure it's lights out by 11. I feel like an early night myself, anyway. See, I told you there was nothing to worry about. And I might give Emma a ring before we go to bed, just to make sure she's not worrying. Thanks. Mwah. Be good. Bye. <laughs> I'm not taking any orders from you. I'll go to bed when I like. Look, Carla, so is that clear I'm going down the pub? If you sneak on me, I'll kill you. Right, we need to uh, make up some bags for collection tomorrow. So we need one kilo of light, one kilo of dried, and some chicken and liver. You'll find them down there somewhere. Must be great knowing you've always got Biff to go home to. Yeah. He really loves you. Anyone can see that. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. Did you know straight away that he was the one? No. I only wish I had. What do you mean? I made a big mistake, Emma. Trusted the wrong man. If it hadn't been for Biff, I don't think I could have got through it. He was the only one who never blamed me. 
never judged me. What happened? It's not a very nice story, Emma. I think you're a little bit too young to need to worry about that sort of thing. Don't treat me like a kid, Linda. This is important to me. I want to know. Hey, Eric. Do you know that... Straighten your tie, will you? Not in a pub. This is a high-class establishment. No, not according to the smell coming from the kitchen. You got something in the oven? Yes, my classic hot pot. Don't worry, it's turned down low. Not low enough. I'd see to it before I have to get the fire brigade. Everyone keeps trying to warn me against Eric. Well, he does have a bad reputation in the village. But you must have seen some good in him. Otherwise, you'd never have taken the risk. I guess I decided to try and make the best of it. Then you should understand how I feel. Yes, but, Dee, you can't compare a business with a marriage. Maybe that's why you English have such a high divorce rate. You think all you have to do is fall in love. Well, I think you have to work at a marriage. And love doesn't have anything to do with it? Well, that can happen, too. But the important thing is that both Eric and I want to make this work. And we will, Cathy, whatever the village thinks. Hey. Hey? Here we go then. Cheers, Albert. Cheers, Dad. Right, you can drink yours at the bar. We'll let you know when we've decided. If we put it to a vote, you'll lose. You've got to give in gracefully, Zach. Is your brother in this bus idea might just work. <sighs> all right then. But don't blame me when he drops us all in it. <whistles> Uncle Albert, you're in. You might as well get us another round while you're up there. Same again, landlord. Beats me by anybody who wants to stay at the Dingles. Just need to clean up, then we can go home. You still haven't told me how you and Biff got together. We fell in love. That's all you need to know, isn't it? What about this other boy? Didn't you love him? Thought I did. So why did it finish? You ask a lot of questions, you. My parents always tell me I'm too young to understand if I ever ask about anything like this. Mine were like that, too. And then I got pregnant. I couldn't tell them. And Danny pretended it wasn't his. I didn't know where to turn to. So I did something very stupid. I took some drugs. And my baby died. I've always regretted what I did. There isn't a day goes by that I don't think about my baby. Maybe the mother who abandoned hers feels the same. And if she does, I feel very sorry for her. I know I'll never forget. But I think when me and Biff have our own, it, it might start to hurt less. We'll be able to give them all the love it could never have had. Oh, I'm sorry, Emma. I didn't mean to upset you. I shouldn't have told you all that. It was you, wasn't it? You left the baby. No. Emma, you've got to talk to someone. I know what you've been going through. Leave me alone! 